do women even love men? I got this question in a comment at the beginning of this year and I decided to finally answer it. Hi, this is Liana, Holistic Intimacy Coach. Welcome back to my channel. Here, I help you get your orgasmic intimacy. So before I get into the video, let's read the said comment and let's dive into it. I was always a health and fitness freak and totally uninterested in relationships. I got a lot of offers despite being male and not approaching because I was happy with myself. For some odd reason, I turned them all away, not by saying that I'm uninterested because I love the attention, but by not reciprocating and enjoying watching to what lengths those girls and women were willing to go to. Some of them seemed to be turned on by me, not responding, and chased like hell. Anyhow, when I decided to get into a relationship, I had no freaking chance because I was overthinking and wasted a lot of energy. This lasted for months. As soon as I gave up and went back into my solo fitness and meditation lifestyle, my last girlfriend chose me. It was effortless. However, I must say that this game is harder for men because you can't just be yourself. You have to act stoic, strong, because females are sensitive to negative emotion and are seeking a rock to stand on, so to speak. Any sign of weakness and she loses respect. I just hate acting tough with my most important person when I am struggling. And as we know, money is terribly important for your mating status as a male. And this kills me as I feel that love is not for me, but for the things I provide. Last relationship was wonderful, but ended, I guess, because of my not great financial situation and that I allowed her to get me angry and then cried because I genuinely felt sorry for raising my voice despite the fact that she provoked me. So yeah, I get the feeling that men have to act and be a walking wallet in order for a relationship to last. Those three points will definitely help a man start a relationship as he will be desirable by being healthy and happy. However, for keeping it lasting, you have to hide your weaknesses and be financially stable, which gives me the feeling that females don't even love men. I wouldn't care one bit if she has money or not, shows weaknesses or not, because I truly love her. Coach, can you please answer me this question? Do women even love men? All right, so delicate one. And I'm sure a lot of women and men can identify themselves in that comment in their gender roles, okay? I totally identified a lot of stuff there throughout my 20s and 30s. I totally acted like that. So I want to get into, first of all, why this is happening. Number one, there's societal conditioning and cultural conditioning. It's based on biology, so men need to ensure certain things for women because women are the bearers of life. And when they carry a life inside of them, their entire body is attuned to feeding and sustaining life for the new soul that they're bringing into the planet. And therefore, they cannot attend to the stuff outside. It totally changes a woman's brain, a woman's physiology, her energy levels and all of that. It's not easy to bear a life inside of you for nine months. So from that stance, the roles were built on a, a biological fact. That being said, nowadays, not everybody, it is true, not everybody has kids. And it's not a problem. Humanity is not going to vanquish just because some people don't have kids. There are eight billions of us and we're still growing. In numbers okay humanity has succeeded so from that stance nobody should be pressured into having kids as much as I'm not saying that people shouldn't be having kids either okay it's an individual choice people are free in most places to choose whether they want to be or not parents so sometimes those biologically induced roles are not the case because some people actually don't want families, okay? Or they don't want families as soon as possible. That's also the case here for both men and women. 
So in those moments or in those cases, men don't necessarily need to be providers for others and women don't necessarily need to be life bearers for others and therefore change their entire lives in that sense. So that's one. Secondly, based on that, there are standards in society. Sadly, those standards are not always healthy. There is a lot of material out there in documentaries about the standards for men, you know, how they should look, how much money they should have, what kind of properties they should have, what kind of influence they should have. Um, and not all men have that. I think that's, first of all, I think we need to realize that a lot of men are suffering because those standards are impossible to reach for the majority of them. The majority of them are not tall, beautiful, rich, and influential. Let's just say it. Okay, the majority of men don't fit that standard. Because biology's biology was not designed to fit all of humanity's standards. It was, we are making our lives differently from what our biology is. That's one. Secondly, for women, not all women are, again, beautiful, not all women are fertile, and obviously not all women are young all the time. Everybody ages. And um, I think the more we realize and start to accept this, uh, the better for all of us. Because we're still people, men, women, doesn't matter, even when we get to 40, 50, 60. We're still people. We still have a role in society. We're still human beings and, and we have a soul and we, we need to be treated with dignity. Yes. And people, even when they're 50 or 60 or 70, they can feel in love with others. And they can marry and they can find their life partners when they're 50 or 60. One very famous example here is Keanu Reeves. He was in his 50s when he found his current partner. There's love after the age of 30, 40, 50, 60. There is love. Okay, I think we need to put that in our brains somewhere. That's one thing. And secondly, to answer now the question, can women even love men? Well, yes but let's talk about which kinds of women. First of all, it's the women that maybe don't fit the standards and they question them because they're still human beings. They still want to be loved. They still want to be touched. They still want to share their lives with somebody, even if they don't, don't um, rise themselves to that standard. Okay? That's one direct answer. Secondly, it's the women that even if they fulfill those standards, most of the times, it becomes pretty obvious to them too that they cannot fulfill those standards all the time. Even the most beautiful women on the planet age. Everybody ages. Even the most beautiful women on the planet, maybe they don't want a family. Yeah, maybe they just want to do other things. Maybe they want to be nuns or maybe they want to be... Uh, what is it? nurses, maybe they want to help in hospitals, maybe they want to build a, their business, whether it's with clothes or with fashion or with jewelry or with health products or with foods. Maybe that's what they want, you know? So the people that realize that I'm not going to fit that standard all of the time or all the standards, so they question those, those are the people that can truly love men even when they're struggling because it's human for men to struggle at times, to have low moments, you know, mentally, emotionally, to have weaknesses. Also, all human beings have them. So a woman that either doesn't fit the standard from the get-go or she eventually realizes I can't fit the standard all of my life, that's the kind of women that start to or are able to love men to answer this guy's question. Uh, when do we challenge the standards? Well, if we never met them from the beginning, then we challenge them as soon as we become aware of them. If we challenge, uh, or sorry, if we meet those standards, but somewhere down the line it becomes obvious to us that no human being can remain at that level all the time, 
That's when we start to question it. And that's when women also are able to love men. One more thing I'd like to add here, because this comment showed the classical situation. I'm not necessarily pursuing women. Therefore, I'm attractive to women. When I hit a low moment, uh, women see me weak, so they walk away. This actually doesn't say much about how we chose the partner to be intimate with. Just because somebody's attracted to us and we find them attractive doesn't mean that they're also the best person for us. And trust me, it is hard to hear that. I know I tell that myself also. Um, it's not easy to see somebody that's really attractive, they're interested in you, but then you realize, wait a second. But if I hit a, a rough patch in my life, is this person going to be here? Boy, it, it really sucks. Like, I, I hate to break myself really bad news and I hate to break it to others also. But that's how it is. So when we choose a partner, I think there's more to be done there. Such as really talk. You need to put your sapiosexual, okay, the intellectual part, at work more. So asking your person of interest, asking them, her, him, doesn't matter, uh, how they see challenging times, if they've been through challenging times, what they've done. Not necessarily asking them about previous relationships, no. You just want to get the idea or the gist of what this person thinks about struggle. Struggle in themselves and then struggle in others. That is something that not many people talk about. I mean, you know, you you got the hots for somebody, you go on dates, and all you want to do is keep the pinky, rosy atmosphere. I've said this in other vlogs in the past. In those initial moments, when everything's pinky, when your hormones all, are all over the place, and they kind of cloud your vision and your judgment, it is also the best moment to ask those challenging questions because it's pinky. And even if it, a question is not so attractive, it can't damage the attraction. To the contrary, it can show you the kind of future that you're headed towards with that person uh, when it comes to struggle. Because every relationship hits struggle. Everybody struggles in their lives. So that's also something that needs, I think there's a lot of dating videos out there that, that talk about this, but somehow it doesn't land because it's not so sexy. Sadly. Okay? Sapiosexuals. Okay, everybody's got a bit of a sapiosexual in them. Please bring that out. It's gonna be your um, saving card. Okay, I, I don't know if that's an English expression literally, but it's gonna be the stuff that really helps you uh, identify which relationship really is a go and which one isn't. So ask the person of interest when you got the hots for them, what do you do when you struggle? What do you do when others struggle? Yeah, you don't even have to make it obvious that what you're asking is for your potential relationship. Just ask general stuff and see what they answer. And use your intuition, feel into the person when you hear that answer. And maybe they don't give you the best answer in the first spot. Maybe they'll just sit with it and, and come back to you at a certain time later, a week or so. Give them time to think about this. Okay, you got to somehow also open up this kind of perspective, mentally, intellectually. Okay, bring your sapiosexual out there. I think the sapiosexual can really save a lot of people from bad relationships from the beginning. That's my opinion. So you can also, it's not just on to the woman, it's also on to you, the man, to really spot what kind of woman am I getting with. So it's not just about looks. Looks are not going to tell you much about how the person is when you hit a low moment. I'm sorry to break it to you. As much as this is the case also for women. Just because a guy is financially potent doesn't mean that he's going to be the ideal partner when you hit a low moment. Or when you grow older. Not old. Older. This needs to be said out there. Alright? I hope this answers. Guys. Ladies, let me know if this video answered. That's it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.